everybody and welcome to Storm Raids and today I'm going to be talking about my least favorite books of the year. I hate talking about my least favorites but I, I gotta do it because I just I always like to see everybody else's <laughs> least favorite books and uh, I do want to say that if there are books on here that you enjoy and that you love that's fine. We all have different tastes. Don't come at me. <laughs> Because <laughs> I know there's a couple on here that a lot of people really enjoy. Everybody's taste is different. But uh, I'm going to start with like my most disappointed books. And then I just have my disappointed. <laughs> and then I have my hated book. I only have one hated book. But <laughs> I promise not to rant too much about any of these books. I, you know, like I said, everybody has their own taste. And if you see me looking over here, it's because I got my notes out. And if I didn't have them, I couldn't remember all the books because it gets jumbled up in my head. Okay, so one of my most disappointed books was As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson, which is the third book in The Good Girl's Di Guide to Murder. I really enjoyed the first two books in this trilogy. And I enjoyed like the first half of this book. But then the author decided to turn, make a turn that I didn't really care for and made the uh, main character do something that I didn't like. And after that, I could care less about what happened with the rest of the book. I just finished it so that it was finished, but I didn't enjoy it. And so, yeah, it was very disappointing. I had gave the other books four stars and I had to give this one two stars because it just it was very disappointing and I'm sad. The next one is The Madness of Crowds by Louise Penny, which is the 17th book in the Chief Inspector Gamache series. Now, I've talked about this on here before, but I really enjoyed this series up until like book eight and then the author took a turn with the character in book nine and going forward it's been kind of hit or miss and I really enjoyed number 16 so I thought maybe I was going to start enjoying the series again and then this one came out <laughs> and I just didn't like the topics that were discussed I didn't like it being post pandemic and things like that. I just kind of wish that authors would just like not put that in their books because we're living through it. We don't want to read about it. And then there were some other topics that I just wasn't a fan about. And I just didn't like how G Gamash was handling things and like how he was putting in. I mean, here he is. He's supposed to be like this chief inspector and he's like got babysitting duty for this lady. And it was just uh, and then there was a lot of repetition and a lot of things that they make fun of in other books they're still making fun of and you know what I've heard it all before in the other books I don't really need to hear it again I don't need to hear about how this dog looks like a rat or that uh, Ruth's duck likes to cuss or whatever I mean you know it was fun a couple of times but it's getting a little old and so yeah I was really disappointed in this one and ended up giving it two stars as well. So that was a bummer. So I tried my first book in verse. And I think I've decided that I don't really care for book in verse. It's, you know, very easy to read because of the way it is written. It says 400 pages and it was quick to read. But I also thought it was quite boring the it's i thought it was going to be like a fun adventure survival story about this girl who gets left in this town after her town is evacuated it was kind of her own fault and <laughs> so i it was hard to feel sorry for her because uh she, her parents were divorced she told one parent she was going to be at the other parent's house and then told that one that she's going you know one of those things and then she was going to go hang out with her friend then her friend decided that she didn't want to and so she was upset and so she just decided to go and go into this house on her own and stay in it and so and her phone went dead and so when the evacuation call got ha happened she had no clue and she like slept through it and everybody's gone she wakes up nobody's there and she ends up having to survive for several years by herself until they come back and get her and to be honest i don't understand why I didn't understand why 
the evacuation ever happened. I don't understand why it took so long for them to go back and get her. And it, yeah, to me, it just didn't make sense. The reasoning behind it at the end was very super lame. And yeah, so another disappointing one. So two stars. All of these but one have are two stars, pretty much. And so the next one is Your Turn to Suffer by Tim Wagner. And I think I've decided that maybe Tim Wagner is just not an author for me. His books always sound kind of interesting and fun, but they're really weird and bizarre and a bit too slow for my taste. I've never gave any of his books higher than a three star, and the last couple of books have been two stars, so that's why I'm thinking maybe, you know, maybe his books just aren't for me. And that's okay, it happens. And uh, my friend even, she's not sure if... She, his books are for her either because we both haven't enjoyed the last couple of them. So at least I don't feel, you know, bad. But yeah, it was, it was just really disappointing. The one that, this one was about some kind of weird cult and kind of a, like a dimension thing happening. And it was really confusing in places. And to, to be honest, I was confused up until like almost the end. Had no clue what I was reading, what was going on. And I, as a reader... I don't like that. Some people do. Some people really like to be so confused and then have it all wrap up in the end. I don't. <laughs> that's just not me. And so that's why I didn't like it that well. And so the next one is Later by Stephen King. And I think my expectations were a little too high for this one. I was expecting a crime novel. It is a hard case crime novel. And I don't feel that this was a crime novel. I felt like it was a coming-of-age story about a kid with a gift that can see dead people. And he kind of gets wrapped up in a bit of a crime. But it wasn't really... I didn't really feel like it was a crime novel. I mean, I'm thinking a crime novel. I'm thinking there are some murders that happened and that somebody is going to have to solve these crimes. Things like that. It's you know, but that's not really what happened. Really, it's ba it's uh, the story about the year that he became able to, like, see dead people and all these things that happened because of it and this ghost that was kind of haunting him or whatever. And, yeah. So, I thought it was really boring. It just did not interest me. And I like Stephen King, so it was a bummer. <laughs> so, there's that. Then the next one is The Town by Bentley Little. This was my first Bentley Little book, and I'm thinking maybe I started with the wrong one. At least I hope, because I am going to try others from him and see. But this one just, I don't know, it was just really slow and boring. And I think I'm coming to the realization that maybe I don't like horror as much as I used to. Maybe I'm too desensitized, or my taste is just changing. And it was about... A family who goes to this town and some weird things start to happen because of some like cave opening thing and yeah but it was really slow and if I remember right I just absolutely hated the ending <laughs> so I don't know but yeah I just wasn't that into it okay now don't come at me but my next one on here is Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo. It's the second book in the Grisha trilogy. And me and my friend Barb, we set off to read this trilogy because we wanted to read the trilogy and then the next duology that came after it before we watched the Shadow and Bone TV series. We're about to the point to where we might just go ahead and watch the TV series. <laughs> but uh, I must say that I did enjoy the first book a tad bit more than the second book. So maybe it's second book syndrome. But I just felt like nothing happened in this book. It was really slow. Really boring. And nothing happened. The only good thing in this book. For me. Was that we get to meet, we get to meet Nikolai. And I really really like Nikolai. He was a lot of fun. 
And we are going to continue and read the third book, and I'm hoping that the third book is going to be more interesting than the first two. And I know uh, some people really, really enjoy the next duology, and then there's others that don't, and so I'm really kind of curious to see if I will enjoy the Six of Crows duology more than the Grisha trilogy, but I did want to start from the beginning and go through them. And I'm hoping that when I come comes to the, the next duology, which is the one about Nikolai, that I will absolutely love that one since I like Nikolai, but I have heard some mixed things about that one too, so <laughs> I'm just kind of curious to see how it will go. But yeah, I just didn't really like this one very much. And the next one is You Will Remember Me by uh, Hannah Mary McKinnon. And this was a thriller, and I just didn't feel like it was very thrilling. And I kind of guessed one of the major twists, even though one of the other twists was a little surprising. By the time we got to there, I just really wasn't that invested and didn't really care. And that's the thing with thrillers to me. It's really all on the ending. And... I'm really hit or miss with thrillers, so sometimes they can really, really grip me. Like, I really enjoyed um, Every Last Fear by Alex Finley. It was one of my favorites, uh, favorite thrillers, even though it only got four stars. It was still one of my favorite thrillers of the year. But uh, this one just was a miss. And then the next one I have is Pen Pal by Dathan Arbach and... Oh, this was so slow and so boring, and I still don't understand why my horror book club loved it so much. I know a lot of them thought it was super disturbing, and that's why I said maybe I just lack empathy, and I just am too desensitized that I just don't see what the disturbing parts was. Yes, it did have a few points, but I mean, it wasn't so disturbing that I found it so interesting, and so, yeah just wasn't for me. It was a bunch of told in like short stories and whew, I tell you what it took me the whole month to read that book because I took these short stories like one and then I had to take a break in between another one to take a break and so yeah but that's okay. Then the next one is They Never Learn by uh, Lane Fargo and this one is definitely a it was me, not the book. There's a lot of people that really enjoy this book. I just didn't really care for some of the content in the book. And so therefore, I didn't find it as likable as some of the others that like this book. It just, it was a thriller, but it just really wasn't that thrilling to me. And I just didn't really care for some of the stuff that was in it. Another one that I was kind of super disappointed about uh, was The Maltese Falcon by Dashiell Hammett. I think my expectations for this one was too high. Probably should have brought them down. I know it was uh, written in the 20s, but boy, was Sam Spade a jerk. <laughs> I just wasn't, I wasn't expecting the main character to be such a jerk and so horrible and sexist. And yeah, it was, I just wasn't prepared for that. And the fact that it was very repetitious. Like, it's like, talked about the same things, like, over and over and over and over and over again. And it's like, let's just get to the point and find out what's going on and find the Maltese Falcon and get it done. <laughs> but yeah, so I was really, that was my first actual, I think, uh, noir. And I was a little disappointed that I didn't like it. I will try some more uh, noir to see what I think. But yeah, for my, at least now I know to keep my expectations <laughs> lowered a little bit and so the next one is the house on needless street by katrona ward if you've noticed that a lot of my horror books are on this list that's why i'm thinking that maybe i'm just not in the mood for horror <laughs> which happens i i switch genres a lot i will be super interested in one and then i won't read it for a long time and then i'll get interested in it again it's happened with me with like romance I used to be like a huge romance reader and then I quit reading romance and it was like strictly mostly mysteries and horror and now I am back to wanting to read all these old school uh, romances again so it just happens. 
But maybe that's just what's happening with this because I found this to be so boring and it was so confusing and I just, none of the characters were likable and I really just didn't care what was happening. I guessed some of the twists that was happening and everything and I think because of that it just didn't really come as a surprise when things happened at the end. I was expecting like a really cool serial killer book and that's not what I got. <laughs> so, oh well. Then the next one is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. And I think, again, this was an expectation thing. I really liked his comedy called The, uh, the Importance of Being Earnest. And I guess I thought this one would be something like that, except for horror. And it wasn't. It, it was very dark and disturbing. But... It was very, very dull and boring. One of the main characters, I can't remember his name, is it Lord Henry or something like that? He, uh, yeah, Lord Henry, he was a horrible man. And I did not like him at all. And then uh, Dorian was a very unlikable character, which I know you're supposed to think that about him, which was okay. But I really wanted to reach in and just grab that Lord Henry and smack him upside the head. <laughs> so yeah I just didn't care for this that much and then the ending I don't know I'm not quite sure if I liked the ending or if I hated the ending it just had one of those endings where you're just like really that's what happened I don't that's not how it was supposed to happen <laughs> I don't know so yeah so it was it was disappointing and the next one is another horror in, it's Blister by Jeff Strand. And I think my big problem with this is I expected one sort of book and I got another. Jeff Strand usually writes satirical horror books. This was a bizarre romance with a little bit of horror elements in it. Not exactly what I was expecting about this girl in the woods who... Uh, had her face all burnt by her ex-boyfriend and everybody calls her Blister. And I guess I thought she was going to get mad at him for peeking in her window when these guys had him. Oh, let's go look at Blister. And she was going to go on some kind of rampage. And at least that's what I was thinking. But no, that's not what happened. <laughs> the guy felt bad because he scared her and he said bad things and made her cry. And so he goes back and apologizes. And then you get this weird, bizarre romance thing going on. Oh, yeah, was not what I expected. And so, yeah, just didn't like it for that. Um, I think if I knew it was going to be some kind of bizarre romance going into it, expectations would have been lowered and I might have enjoyed it a little bit more. Then, okay, the next one. Don't come at me on this one either. But The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Oh, it was a long one, and it was a long, boring ride. I, I just wasn't really a fan of the characters. I didn't really care. I, I don't know. It just didn't interest me to... It just felt like a really long, drug-out book about one girl trying to, uh, you know, figure out, you know, all this stuff that was going on, and I, I don't know. I knew I wasn't going to like it, though. But I was reading it for a challenge, and it was to read a book that everybody loves. And it was the only book that I could find. And my friend said, hey, let's buddy read it together. And at least she didn't like it either, so I don't feel so bad. <laughs> Sometimes we are on, on board with books. We are like on par. We both hate it or we both love it. And then there's sometimes she will absolutely love a book, and I don't understand why. <laughs> So, at least we both didn't like this one all that well. And it was funny because she thought she was going to enjoy it a lot more than me, and she didn't, so I thought that was kind of funny. But, yeah, you know, a lot of people, they absolutely love this book, and that's cool. But I just knew the content, I, what it was about did not appeal to me. And so I, I would have DNF'd it actually, if it wasn't for the fact that I was reading for a challenge and I didn't want to have to read another book for that prompt. So I just finished it. 
Thank goodness for audio. That's all I can say. And then the next one is The Big Four by Agatha Christie. And I think my big disappointment was in this one is it felt like a spy novel and not a mystery. And it was weird seeing Hercule Poirot trying to solve things as like a, a spy type of novel about these four who had some kind of like big thing that was going on and they were trying to, it was like international stuff going on. Yeah, I really can't remember a lot. I didn't like it, so I didn't absorb too much of it. And um, I was just, this is probably my most disappointing Hercule Pro book that I've read so far. And I've read six of them. And I, because I, I read them in order, so I've read one through six. <laughs> so I've read six of them, and this was number five, and I didn't like it. And the next book is A Wolf in Duke's Clothing by... Suzanne Allen and it's the first book in the shifters of the Beaumont and really my thing with this book is I don't think the author did a very good uh, portrayal of shifters in a historical romance setting um, I read some uh, paranormal type historical romances before I've never had like this much of a problem with it, but I don't know. There was just something about it just did not click. And then it's a romance, but there was hardly any romance going on in this. They were fighting more than they were romancing. <laughs> and then it just, I don't know. I didn't feel like the characters meshed well because of that. It was hard to believe that like by the end, even though... He was mated. That was his mate and everything because she smelled like, the, you know, mate. It just didn't work for me. And it was like the least romantic book I've read so far this year. And so, yeah, I just didn't really enjoy it. The last book and my most hated book of the year. Are you ready? Near the Bone by Christina Henry. I gave this book one star. It's the only book this year that I gave one star to. It's the first book that I've ever had like hate mail on or hate messages on Goodreads because somebody didn't like my opinion. <laughs> and you know, each to your own opinion. You can love this book all you want. I didn't like it. It was billed as a horror book and I understand that the husband was Mostly the horror part of this, but it said there was a monster in the woods. And there was a monster in the woods. And it, like, killed just about everybody. But you didn't really see that much of the monster. It wasn't, I mean, that wasn't there. It's like, I wanted a monster in the woods. But I got the husband, and I understand that. But don't tell me there's a monster in the woods. And then give me a, a human. Because <laughs> I wanted a creature. I thought I was going to get a creature feature. And that's not really what I got. But the husband. I don't trigger on books very often. And I really don't have a reason to be triggered when there's like a husband, wife abuse, spousal abuse, I guess. Because I've never been married. So I've never had to deal with any of that stuff. But this man was so bad. That I, if I would have been holding the book in my hand, I probably could have thrown it across the, I really, I should have DNF'd it, but I kept going. And the more I kept going, the madder I kept getting. <laughs> and I, I hate read this whole book. <laughs> Expecting more from this monster in the woods. And I didn't get it. And I've decided that I just don't think Christina Henry's for me. Which is okay. It happens. Authors are like that. I I think had a one hit wonder because I gave five stars to Lost Boy. Really, really enjoyed it. It was a retelling of Peter Pan from like the point of view of Captain Hook whenever they were younger and everything. Like you learn how he lost his hand and all those kind of things. 
and it it was really really good i loved it it was dark and it was just great and then i read uh i think it's the girl in red which was about a little red riding hood and it was super boring then i read uh i think it was the ghost tree and i i again it was boring i just didn't like it i didn't click with the characters i didn't like the um stereotype of a small town racism type thing and uh i just didn't like it and then this one sounded so cool and i didn't like it <laughs> and so i gave up on the author and my friend read the newest book which was uh called the horseman which is about sleepy hollow and it sounds super good and that's the thing her books draw me in by the blurb they sound so good and then i don't like them but barb told me that she didn't think i would like the horseman either because for a, a long part of it she was pretty bored in it she did eventually i think like it enough for like three stars or something like that i think but yeah she could tell that she didn't think i would like it so i'm glad i didn't even try for that one <laughs> so yeah so i think i gave up on her sometimes it happens you get the first book you read from an author is the only book you like, and that happens. So, that, that's all the books. Hopefully, I didn't hate too much on any of your favorites. Um, like I said, you know, you can love them all you want. That's fine. I know some of you don't like my favorites. Breaks my heart a little bit, but it happens, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> And so, what were some of your uh, least favorite books of the year? Did you have some that just, you were so hyped up for, you just knew they were going to be really good, and then they just fell kind of flat? If you did, list them in the comment, because I would like to know what they are. Because I don't know why, but I just really like to know the books that people don't like, because sometimes it makes me want to go check them out, <laughs> honestly. So, uh, don't be afraid to let me know. And if you disagreed with me on some of these, that's fine. You can talk about it in the comments. Just don't hate at me, please. I had enough of that on Goodreads. <laughs> and so I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. And I will see you on the next video. Bye.